Hi everybody, it's Thursday. It's uh, second Lipsock of the new term. Uh, welcome back everybody and uh, to friends old, new, far and wide. Uh, I think particularly Mr Conway in Australia. Hello Mr Conway. Hello Mr Conway. Uh, and Mr Sanders uh, who is not that far away but uh, is no, not with us at the moment. Um, except in spirit. Um, and this week it's uh, Miss Rio on... So I'm going to talk to you about classics reimagined and retellings. So do you know what that means when I say retellings or reimagined stories? I'm guessing it's like a very classic and modernised or twisted in some way. Yeah, so exactly that. So basically they're often novels or short story collections like this one. Um, and they'll basically take either the best bits from a book and turn it into a whole new story, give it a twist and a new focus, they can make it darker sometimes, that happens quite often, you'll see quite a few of them here, definitely for like YA your audiences, they'll take, so this one, Lost Boy, for example, is Peter Pan, but with a sort of horror twist. And I just think it's such an interesting little subgenre, it <laughs> and it's something that I'm seeing happening more and more and more especially with the Greek and Roman tales. Um, there's a lot of books coming out, Lulu's nodding, <laughs> she knows, <laughs> um, coming out that are retellings of that. And one of the things that they often do that I definitely wanted to draw your attention to is they'll take stories that had an interesting female character that maybe didn't get much focus in the story and draw her out and focus on her story within it. So with the Greek tales, they do that a lot. We've got one here, Ariadne, which is... She's a character in one of the Greek tales, but she sort of wasn't the focus. And so they retell the story to give her some focus. Um, and yeah, it's just a really interesting genre. Have you read many books that are retellings or can think of any? Yeah? Oh, well, it's Twilight, obviously. No, it's okay. Not. <laughs> that's not, <laughs> that's that's not, not retelling. really not a retelling. retelling is. No, so it technically isn't. No. It really, really is really, not. Really Anything is not more specific. <laughs> Nice try, though. We, we know, know that Evie? Cinderella is dead. Cinderella, Cinderella is dead. dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, yeah, I've got the author. That, the, that yes, that's the sequel. Same author. Is it the sequel? Wife, I'm guessing, from Poison Park. Well, I'll talk about that one in a minute. But yeah, that's the same author. She does that. So she's got a book called Cinderella is Dead, and it's a sort of dystopian retelling of Cinderella. Um, and that's one of the things you see retold a lot is fairy tales. But usually they'll make them darker or more diverse because... That's sort of something in the modern day we maybe want a little bit more of that the old fairy tales don't <laughs> really offer us. Um, but Beauty and the Beast and Cinderella seem to be the two main ones that I've noticed are retold a lot. Um, we've got The Lunar Chronicles by Mar Marissa Mayer here. Have you read any of these? I know... Um, Never might look familiar, maybe. Eloise has, but she's not here. <laughs> uh, very, yeah. They're very popular. Yeah, very very popular. popular. Yeah. But basically, Cinderella is the main character, and in this version, she's a cyborg, and she's living in a modern sort of high-tech city that I think is meant to be a bit like Tokyo, but set in a distant future. And it basically takes all the main tropes from Cinderella, but makes it really high-tech, which is quite interesting. <laughs> not, mm. not something that I would have ever... The together. two things would have been together no, in my neither. brain, but that's become a whole series now, and it's really popular. And that's become a whole popular series in its own right, away from Cinderella, which happens a lot, which is quite interesting. Um, we've got a lot of Beauty and the Beast retellings. A Curse So Dark and Lonely is a modern um, retelling of that, and the main character actually has cerebral palsy, which is really interesting. Um, and it doesn't really affect her character too much, she just does. <laughs> but mm -hmm. the rest of the story is... Remember when we did Pretty that talk about diversity same. back in mm. September, October? There you go. Yeah, one. there's one. There's another one for that. Mm. Yeah, and I haven't read it, um, but it's got the prince who turns into a beast and she gets taken by him with some magic and they kind of... The whole thing happens very similarly, but it's a modern retelling, which is quite interesting. And, of course, Cinderella and uh, Beauty and the Beast are global um, plots and global... Mm. Uh, tales anyway they're not they didn't they're not specifically western i mean mm. in angela carter's um bloody chamber yes. the beast tale is much more eastern than it is it's got nothing to do with europe at all yeah um, yeah i was going to mention the bloody mm. chamber I, you guys probably won't have read it and shouldn't, no. <laughs> no, shouldn't <laughs> but that's really, basically yes. <laughs> a very dark grown-up retelling of mm. the stories and it they're just they're very gothic mm. very horror 
and it basically takes the scariest moments from the original fairy tales makes them even worse yeah. <laughs> but that's quite beloved isn't it the bloody chamber because yes. it does yes, really very much so go to those far off points. yeah and she's been deliberately provocative in, yeah in the way that she does it yeah. yeah and again that collection has come it becomes something in its own right almost mm. you know mm. those are kind of stories now that people look at they don't really look at the original source mm, material that's right quite so much which you see mm. happening quite a lot which mm. i think is quite interesting um, we've also got a lot of them are retellings of Jane Austen mm -hmm. and specifically Jane Eyre. You see Jane Eyre crop up a lot. Do any of you read Jane Eyre or any Jane Austen books? Or yeah. heard of? You probably heard, heard of. of. I've read Pride and Prejudice. I was like you read Pride and Prejudice. Pride and Prejudice. Mm -hmm. Have any of you heard of Bridget Jones's Diary? Did you know that Bridget Jones's Diary is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice? Wait, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, really. That's another example of a book that is mm. its own story now in its own right, but it's the same story <laughs> if you think about it. And did you know There's... it's a Cinderella story too? Yeah. Did you know that? Prime Precious is a Cinderella story? No. Oh, well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I bet you didn't know. <laughs> I bet no. you didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. But that's the interesting thing. There's so many books that are retellings of original versions that mm. then become their own book and often the original version or so what we think of the original version like Miss Huntley said has come from another book mm. so at the end of the day <laughs> there's only really a small pool of stories there that everything has kind of, of pulled from which these kind of retellings really tell you that which is interesting so we've got Pride and Premeditation there which have you read that did you read that Evie no, no. I thought you might have done it's Modern, it's a retelling of Pride and Prejudice, but they are at law school. So Elizabeth mm. and Mr. Darcy are at law school together and they butt heads, as you would expect. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of the premise of that. Um, there's this one, which I think was on the Reading Challenge a few years uh, ago, yes. was yeah. it? Yeah, she's done Rosie Rushton, she's done mm. loads of um, Jane Austen. Yeah. So that one is Sense and Sensibility. No, that oh, one's no. Pride and Prejudice. Love Lies and Lizzie, yeah, Pride but and she, Prejudice. <laughs> she's done an equivalent for Sense and Sensibility, mm -hmm. and Mansfield Park, all of them. It started out yeah. as a sort of fan fiction subgenre, didn't it? But it's become much more. It's than become, that now. Yeah, yeah, its own thing, yeah, definitely. So definitely. Isn't Clueless a retelling of Emma? You're right, yeah, Clueless. Have you seen the movie Clueless? It's no. It's a retelling of Emma. It's a retelling of Emma, and people don't really often know that. No. <laughs> you just think it's its own, yeah. <laughs> it's its own story. Yeah. But yeah, there's also a lot of Jane Eyre, which kind of falls under a similar ilk. We've got Wide Sargasso Sea. Have you heard of that? Yeah. I think you might have. Not probably not read it, but that we were talking about this earlier is actually in the classics section now. It's <laughs> become a classic. And this, so right, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> this is a prequel, sort of, to one of the characters that is in Jane Eyre, who perhaps didn't get as much of a story as she deserved no. in the original <laughs> tale. Mm -hmm. um, and the author of this decided to give her a bit more of a voice. I don't want to say too much without spoiling Jane Eyre because it's quite a big plot point. Phenomenally radical. Yeah. But this book now is a classic in its own mm. right, even though it's based off a character in the original book. So that's, it's just really interesting how that mm. happens. It can just become its own thing altogether. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> We've also got, so you mentioned earlier, The Cinderella is Dead. The author um, brought out this book, I think this year it came out, called This Poison Heart. Mm -hmm. And this one is interesting because it's not an exact retelling of a book. It's inspired by The Secret Garden. I read it and it's Good Secret Garden is one of my favourites. <laughs> um, but I enjoyed it. But it sort of takes themes and ideas and the general vibe of the book and creates this whole completely new story. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't really have to have read Secret Garden or know it, much like this one. You maybe would have to have a knowledge of Jane Eyre. And this one is, well, actually, the reader I married him to mm. enjoy it. But this one is completely different. Now, I'll read out the blurbs to you of the Poison Heart and Secret Garden and you can tell me what you can pick up <laughs> about it. So this Poison Heart says, ever since she can remember, Brysis has had power over plants. Flowers bloom in her footsteps and leaves turn to face her as though she were the sun. It's a power she and her adoptive mothers have spent her whole life trying to hide. And then Brysis inherits an old house from her birth mother and suddenly finds herself with the space and privacy to test her powers for the first time. But as she starts to bring the house's rambling garden back to life, she finds she has also inherited generations of secrets. So that's the premise of that book. Mm. <laughs> now, the blurb I found for The Secret Garden is this. 
When Mary Lennox is sent to Misselthwaite Manor to live with her uncle, everybody says she is the most disagreeable looking child ever seen. <laughs> it's true too. Mary is pale, spoiled and quite contrary, but she is also horribly lonely. Then one day she hears about a garden in the grounds of the manor that has been kept locked and hidden for years. And when a friendly Robin helps her find the key, she discovers the most magical place anyone could imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so can you see how it's not the same story, but it's mm. sort of taken the general idea from the first and weaved it into this whole new thing. And this is interesting because, I don't know if you pointed out, the main character has two mothers. Mm. So that kind of fits in with the diversity theme. Um, all the characters are black, they're African-American, and, and pretty much everybody in the book is black as well, I think. I wonder how she's depicted as a... Because, you know, you talk about Mary, Mary, Mary quite mm -hmm. contrary. I wonder if she um, came later on, of, yeah, yeah, takes a different tack with her depicting her personality. There's also a mythical element, isn't there? There is. You picked up on it, Lulu. This mythical element to do with flowers that bloom as she walks. Um. Your classical... Okay, isn't like it though? Girl. One of the characters is called Cersei, and yeah. there's lots of little hints like that. So it's sort so of a double retelling yeah. <laughs> in its own way. Yeah. <laughs> but the main character in this, she is sort of quite lonely because she has this power. It means she's struggled to make friends, and that's sort of the way that they combined it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah that was interesting because it's sort of yeah taken bits yeah. and gone. I'm going to make my own. Because <laughs> there is a seat. There was a well, a couple of sequels to The Secret Garden. There's one mm. that's quite adult where they come back together and um, the First World War intervenes because, of course, that would be about right. Oh, uh, yeah. About age. Um, and, uh, I read one set in the 40s and it's right. some evacuees go to live in the manor. Oh, I right. Yeah, that's okay. Well, that's a good idea, isn't it? I can't remember. It was quite good. It was yeah. definitely a kid's book, but yeah. it was sweet. Yeah. But that's yeah another way of doing mm -hmm. it, I suppose. It's mm -hmm. sort of a retelling, mm -hmm. sort of, <laughs> in yeah. its own way. Yeah. But, yeah, moving on from what we were talking about with that one, Greek mythology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we get loads of Greek myths retold. So we've got, coming up just in, like, the last probably three or four years, we've mm -hmm. had Ariadne, Circe, Pandora's Jar, Silence of the Girls, Percy Jackson as well. I'm sure you've all read Percy Jackson. Mm -hmm. That's its similar ilk where it's sort of taken elements and written a whole new story it's not necessarily a retelling of the original mm -hmm. tale it's sort of a new version but again that's become its own series mm. in its own right even if it hadn't been based on the original tales I think it would mm -hmm. have still become its own thing um, but yeah I think there's so many interesting stories out there that are beca have become their own thing even though they're based on original source material and I bet there's so many that you've read I don't even know about <laughs> that you don't even realize mm. are retellings um but have you read any that you know is a retelling have you read any Greek myth books Lulu are there any that there's a book by Francesca Simon who wrote Horrid Henry mm. and it's like one venture into like YA mm -hmm. and it's I think it's called Hell so H-E-L and it's a retelling of one of L Loki's kids who got dumped in the underworld oh, oh yes um, yeah. And it's about her struggle with that. And in the book, she she's very reluctant to to be there at all. And it's okay. kind of about her basically trying to get out. Um, oh. But it's really good. Um, mm. I read it in year seven. Mm. So you just go for it, yeah. Yeah, you don't really see much about the Norse myths quite as much. Not in the same way as the Greek myths. It's definitely the Greco-Roman sort of tales that... You yeah, the Norse lot, myths are a bit more older, a mm. bit older, aren't they? The um, Gaiman's picked up on them mm -hmm. for older, for older uh, readers. Yeah. Um, they're much more. You can't damp down the problems quite so easily. No, that's true. <laughs> um, but the same applies to Christianity. There's the retelling of the mm. of the stories of the Bible and also of um, the New Testament. I mean, there are numerable. Uh, poems and um, at least four, I know, at least four or five retellings of the nativity story, let alone the plays and the um, true, you know, the the hymns and carols that retell in a different mm. way. So. And then you wonder what was the actual <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for all of these. You think what yeah. was the very first sort of time this yep. story itself was told? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but with all that in mind, I thought we could play a game called the paperback game. Lulu, you might remember it. Maybe Sienna. Sienna, well. yeah, with Sienna, yeah, Sienna's yeah, there too. No pressure, Sienna. But you were very good <laughs> last time. <laughs> 
So with the theme of rewriting and retelling and all that sort of jazz, yeah. Basically, what we have to do for this game, we all have to get involved and it's going to test your um, writing skills. Writing skills, yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Creativity. <laughs> Creativity. Um, so, we'll go round. I'm only going to choose three because we don't have quite as long as we did last time and it was mm. quite a long game. Mm, it was quite a long game. <laughs> but one person will read everybody the blurb of a book and we'll start with the Lemony Snicket one because I know how this one starts. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll read you all the blurb and then I'll give you a little uh, piece of paper and a pen and you have to write down what you think the opening line to the story is. Remember? So you have to, do you remember? No, so bad it's you fun, it's fun. Well, you were both really good. <laughs> we were. You were both really good. Yeah, it, it was good fun. I See, think collectively we did well. Yeah, collectively. So. Yeah, we did. I think so. I watched it back earlier. Yeah, there will be no different this time. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, yeah, you have to listen to the blurb, listen to the themes, and think about the things it points out and think, how is this book, how does it open? What is the way that the author chooses to start off the story? And it's sort of in the theme of retelling because you're retelling the first opening line for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> does that all make sense? Yeah. So, we'll write it all down and then. I will start with this one. I'll take them all, I'll read them all out, and then you all have to vote which, which one, one you think is the real one. And the real one will be hidden in there because I will write down the real one because I have it here. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to all vote and you think, have to think which one is the real one. Does that make sense? Yeah. It makes sense as you start to play. It's a bit complicated at first, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You learn by doing it. You do, yeah. So, do you all want to take, actually, do you want to peel it off and. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I thought that was a good one. I tried to think of what people wouldn't have read. <laughs> yeah, I'll do And you can all take a pen. If you don't have a pen, oh yeah, just take them all and pass them around. Thank you. Oh, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, this is a signed copy. Is it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> How did I miss that? <laughs> we have a signed Lemony Snicket book in here. Wow. Yeah. That is amazing. Pat didn't it's tell me. It's <laughs> pretty well we've invented, only had it a very way. short time. Yeah, yeah, well. it is, yeah we have only it's had it a short new. time. So. I didn't even know. Ah, uh, uh, gone. Oh, I'll go and grab it. Okay. No, I've got two and enough in there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was just crumbs. Just cr it was just crumbs. Oh, no, like... <laughs> right, so does the game make sense to everybody? Have we eaten all the, we eaten all the new biscuits that I got as well then? Oh, um, oh I, we I, weren't I, I was going to ask oh, you. No. They were no, for Litsock. They well, are for Litsock, yeah. I tell you what, yeah, let's get more biscuits because we need brain food. Imagine if they were Oh, Mr. Humphreys, could I have a pen as well, please? I've not got one myself. Oh, no. <laughs> So you read the blurb, you have to write down the first line. What you think the first line is, yeah. Uh, Would you mind grabbing me one. a pen? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so I take one, I I one, one. And pass around. <laughs> Moderation in all things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I've got everyone else one, but not myself. Oh, wait, um, you don't like them? Do you want well, I've got shortbread as well. Do you want shortbread? I can get shortbread. Dad, do you want shortbread? <laughs> Biscuit run. <laughs> this one, no? No? Okay. No? Okay. No? Right. Right, shall we start? Sure. Yep. <laughs> okay, so listen to the blurb, and then... And then write the opening line. Yeah. Don't try and remember the blurb and write that. And just one sentence, we don't want it to be super, super long. <laughs> so... This true story, as true as Lemony Snicket himself, begins with a rather puzzling note pushed under his door. Mr Snicket has investigated many things over the course of his long and suspicious career, but never his own death. <laughs> Certainly, he didn't relish the task of unravelling the riddle of his demise, but he had no choice. It was put right in front of him, on his plate. If you are confused, you have every right to be. This book is about bewilderment and life's big questions. <laughs> oh. I have no idea. Have you had any um, of these unfortunate events? No. Right. Yeah, I have. So this I is have. the title <laughs> of the book, <laughs> Poison for Breakfast. Still no idea. I'm just unsure 
just, you know, don't, don't overthink don't it. Don't overthink, overthink it. it. No. I can't not overthink it. Last year. Okay. Yeah, it's very annoying. Or this year, even. You got one. <laughs> Put your initials on it as well. Oh, yes, of course. Initials. Initials? Yeah, for. Oh, it's, it's for Miss Rio's benefit when she's going to read them all out. Wait, is, is the character called? Yeah, yeah it's Lemony Snicket. Snicket. Okay, so Lemony Snicket gets a note pushed under his door and he has to investigate his own death. Think about that. Just, yeah, you're just really initials. Initials. It doesn't really matter too much. Yeah. Yep. Should we give it? Once you're done, pass it over to me. I think mine's quite creative. Good, that's what we want. <laughs> okay, I'll have to shuffle them. Which might be tricky when the, the sticky. Oh, actually, it doesn't matter because <laughs> I know which one I wrote anyway. Mm. Of course. Are we done, Sienna? Okay. Sienna's got big shoes to fill her own. <laughs> <laughs> no, no pressure, Sienna. You can't. <laughs> As you say, we, didn't we write them on the blog? Oh, God. Oh, we put them up on a display. We, 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 put, might, I, we, we put them somewhere. I'm, th- I'm sure Possibly we put the them blog. on the blog. We'll have to check. I made a display of them. Yeah, you I, did. I remember, yeah. yeah I did. Well, I can do that again. Yeah. Replace the blackout poetry. Yeah, oh, it was there for a bit, wasn't it? It was, I yeah. Think. yeah. It was so blog. long ago now. <laughs> it was March 2020. Rec- yeah, I know. We kept a record of it for ages. We did it in reading group as well. Yeah, yeah we did. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 I'm 17 now. Yeah. No, I think you're in your... Are you in your nine? Yeah, I was in year eight or year nine. I think you're in year nine. I can't remember. So My sense of time really, is... It? Especially when you're at school, because you've got year by year. Yeah. Right, are we all... We're ready. Yep. We're ready. Are we sitting comfortably? And Miss Rio will okay. begin. I'll read them all out, and then you have to think about which one. Okay? I'll read them all out twice. I'm not dead. At least I don't think I am. I muttered. I stared blankly to the wall, holding the dreaded note. <laughs> 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 Very good. <laughs> The note wasn't a very kindly note, but he supposed that was regular enough. <laughs> I'm dead. Simply that's put. It. Yeah. Right. That's it. That's the end of that. <laughs> Dear Mr. Snicket, you are to die. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> She's a very good girl. Yeah, this is great. A letter was pushed under my door as soon as I read it. I knew what was going to happen. Ooh. This morning I had poison for breakfast. <laughs> when I came down to breakfast that fateful day, I found a note by my porridge plate. It said, dot, dot, dot. Ooh, suspenseful. Mm. Have you ever been dead? If so, I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> Last one. I assure you, my situation certainly seems all too peculiar. This letter may be the strangest thing yet. Ooh. <laughs> They're great. These are excellent. Well Yet done. again, we're pulling it out of the see. bag. Yeah, yeah. see. So see, you all thought, oh, so modest. modest. <laughs> Too modest. Do you want to read them one more time, maybe? Shall I read them one more yeah, time and then you put so. your hand out and vote which one you think? Okay. I'm not dead, at least I don't think I am, I muttered as I stared blankly at the wall, holding the dreaded note. Any votes for that one? I can't no. really remember mm. the other <laughs> <laughs> Okay. The note wasn't a very kindly note, but he supposed that was regular enough. Uh, maybe, I might go for that yeah, one. Yeah, I might go, go for yeah. that one. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> Anyways, so that one. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> Dear Mr. Snicket, you are to die. Good luck. Oh, I like that maybe. one too. That one's good. A letter was pushed under my door. As soon as I read it, I knew what was going to happen. Mm. No? No votes for that one? This morning I had poison for breakfast. I like that one. You like that one? Okay. One vote for that. When I came down to breakfast that fateful day, I found a note by my porridge plate. It said dot, dot, dot. Oh, 
one. <laughs> you like that one. Okay. Have you ever been dead? If so, I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> That's your favourite, is it? <laughs> and then lastly, I assure you my situation certainly seems all too peculiar. This letter may be the strangest thing yet. That's you like that, that one too? Good. That, that one's one good. Very... I'll stick with my original choice. Yeah, me too. Right, shall I read you the real one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this morning I had poison for breakfast. Oh, <laughs> oh there we go. <laughs> As the title would the title, suggest. Yes. <laughs> you were right. Well done. Yeah. Well done, Sienna. Well done, Right, I'll keep these. Yes. Should we do one more? Yes, indeed. Yeah. We got time for at least one more. Well, yeah. Yeah. Let's see how we get on. Let's see how we get on. It's, um, um, it's only 22. Oh. Shall we do Ar Ariadne? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Who wants to? Who wants to be the one that does the real one? You want to? Okay. Now, where's oh, the rest sorry, of the yeah, post it's yeah, gone? Oh, we'll right. pass them around. Right. Same as before, Same but, before. but don't write your name on these ones Absolutely. because. Absolutely. Take um, one and pass around, folks. Um, <laughs> skipping Mary and Mary. Well, actually, Mary <laughs> needs blurb. to write it down as well. She needs to write down the actual. So, it might, is the blurb on the inside cover? Yeah, it'll um, be here. Yeah, it'll be on the. For the first line? Or, no, not the oh, first line. The blurb. So, remember, oh, you read out the blurb and then we all write. Okay. Ready? At the yeah. back? Evie, you got um. One. Yep. And then the rest. Okay. Oh, I remember the line of this before. <laughs> I remember now. It's what, all coming back. Can you remember what the text was? Because I, I can remember some of them, but I can't remember what you, we. We did this Oh, we, we did. did yeah. We did. The, we did a little princess. Do you remember doing a little princess? Yeah, yeah. And we did a girl of ink and stars. I think that's right. Girl of ink and stars. Do you remember what and yours? I remember your... mine was something about like a forest or like a dark. I'll we'll have to find mm. it on YouTube. Yeah. Was like... I did In watch fact, the beginning. I watched the beginning of it to remind myself oh. how to play okay. the game. <laughs> yes, Yana, you have to find yourself on YouTube. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. I think we did 1984 as well. Yes, we did. Yes, yes, we did. Right, yo, right. Meryl. Okay. As princess of Crete and daughters of the fearsome, King Minos, Ariadne and her sister Phaedra, Phaedra yeah. mm -hmm. grow up hearing the terrible bellows of the Minotaur from the labyrinth beneath the palace. The Minotaur, Minos's greatest shame and Ariadne's brother, demands blood every year. When Theseus, prince of Athens, arrives in Crete as a sacrifice to the beast, Ariadne falls in love with him. But helping Theseus defeat the monster means betraying her family. And Ariadne knows that in a w world ruled by Mercurial mer gods? Mercilus? Yeah. Mercurial, maybe? Yeah. Is that a word? <laughs> I don't know. It's M E R C U R I A L. Mercurial. Mercurial. Okay. Keep changing their minds. Mm. <laughs> um, mercurial gods, drawing their attention, can cost you everything. Ariadne mm. has heard too many tales of women being punished for the acts of men. She's determined to set her own fate, but will her decision to help Theseus ensure her a happy ending, or will she find herself sacrificed to her lover's ambition? Ooh. Okay. So it's all about the Minotaur, the labyrinth, fates, strong women. I mean, it sounds very good. <laughs>
No, you don't remember the appeal. Oh, I finished it. Oh, you finished it? Yeah, Lulu's got it now. Oh, right, okay. Mm-hmm. And are the you, appeal. Oh, the appeal. Yeah, I love it. It's so good. You finished it now? Mm. Okay, because you were more than halfway through when I last saw you. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the, I think, maybe 100 pages away from through. Mm. Okay, so you should know by next week you'll uh, finish. <laughs> and I can talk to someone at last about what happened. <laughs> I've bought a copy. <laughs> there we go. You sold me on it, and then you followed through. <laughs> <laughs> I need to talk to someone about it. Well, we've talked a bit, haven't we, about how we found yeah. one of the characters very annoying, for instance. <laughs> among, among other things. Do you remind me of it myself as well? No, 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 no not Nobody's at all. You don't, like you don't you. say boo, for, for instance. I don't. <laughs> right, are we all done? Yeah, are we all done? We are. Um, okay. okay. All right, ready, everyone? Do I, like, mix them up? Or It'll do whatever no, no, we want. We, we don't really know. Because we, we have no idea. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, go ahead. The first time she saw the Minotaur devour its victims was the last time she would willingly obey her father's will. Ooh. Ooh. Well, well, well. <laughs> Try not to look at the things. I <laughs> know, <laughs> don't look at the initials. I heard his bellow breath, my feet again. Yes, beneath. Beneath my feet again yesterday. The shameful... Secret. <laughs> secret. The house of Minos, my mother's son. The sky was always blue when the children come came. Ooh. <laughs> the Minotaur roared and the ground shook beneath my feet. Let me tell you the story of a righteous man. The low horn of the Minotaur rings through her ears. No, no, please, I can't take this. I'm normally punished for something I didn't do, but this time the fault is my own. Ooh, this is, these are good. I know. <laughs> I've seen enough of this. If someone doesn't do something, then I will. Mm-hmm. I hope the fates smile kindly down on me just this once. I might push my luck with, in the, f- I might push luck in my favour. Okay. Oh, they're all very so good. Very I don't good. know. <laughs> very good. Oh, we've so yeah, read one right. more time and I same as last time. time Put your vote up on Yeah. Here. The first time she saw the Minotaur devour its victims was the last time she'd willingly obey her father's will. Mm, nope. I'm not sure. Okay. I heard him be- I heard him bellow beneath my feet again yesterday. The shame the shameful secrets the house of Minos. My mother's son. No? No. no. <laughs> I don't think so. The was the sky was always blue when the children came. So you'll get two votes for that yeah, one. Yeah, that one is good. <laughs> the Minotaur roared and the ground shook beneath my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you the story of a righteous man. Ooh. Yeah, I might want that one too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, to the point. <laughs> the low horn of the Minotaur rings through her ears. No, no, please, I can't take this. Mm. I'm normally punished for something I didn't do, but this time the fault is my own. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I like that one. I've seen enough of this. If someone doesn't do something, then I will. Come on, we've got people on both I hope the fates smile kindly down on me just this once. I might push luck in my favour. Mm. That one is good. Yeah. yeah, they're all very good. Yeah, very that's, good. That, there's probably three or four I could have voted for them. Mm. <laughs> Shall I say which it is? Yes, please. Yeah, read it out you read from it from the book. book. Read read it from the book. book. Do you want them? Yeah, okay. thank you. I'll do something with these. <laughs> Let me tell you the story of a righteous mm. man. Yes. Ah, we got well it right. Done. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. I wasn't even cheating. I hadn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> Right, very in, very interestingly, the um, the book is written by a woman who has a, was an English teacher, uh-huh. oh. not a classicist, not mm. a classics teacher. Well, an English well, well, interesting. Teacher. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Now yeah, I'm meaning really to read it. it. Sounds very good. It's probably really liked it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
I couldn't finish it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe didn't like maybe it. Maybe I'll meet in the middle. Well, <laughs> I didn't feel it was telling me anything I didn't know. Did sure, I mean? sure. I really, one, Mary Reno's version. Mm. The bull from the, not the bull. Not the bull from the sea, the other one. Um, the mine, the labyrinth. I really like that one. Anyway, yeah. doesn't matter. Think yes, we've well, we got time for one more. We're just about time just for about one time more. For one more. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try and get this happy ahead of time. <laughs> right, take one and pass around. <laughs> if, there's, if we run out, let me know. I, hope there's there's enough. Enough. Yeah, I can rip it in half if not. No, 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 there's more here. I was okay. just trying to. Um, I didn't put that on So I'll just because I've read it. I mm -hmm. know all about yes, it. Yes, you know all about it. So, uh, Dune. Dune. Mm -hmm. Sci-fi classic. It was um, in this, released in the cinema, the movie adaptation, just before Christmas. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you, did, you, did you go and see it? Ah, ah well, that... What did you think? Um, it was quite interesting, the, the, like, the cinematography of it was really good. And, I mean, it was a bit confusing, but overall... Very good experience. Mm. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's good yeah. news, yeah. isn't it? Lots of big names. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Before The Matrix, before Star Wars, before Ender's Game and Neuromancer, there was Dune, one of the greatest science fiction novels ever written. Melange or spice is the most valuable and rarest element in the universe, and it can only be found on a single planet, the in inhospitable desert world Arrakis. Whoever controls Arrakis controls the spice, and whoever controls the spice controls the universe. When stewardship of Arrakis is transferred to his house, Paul Atreides must travel to the planet's dangerous surface to ensure the future of his family and his people. But as malevolent forces explode into conflict around him, Paul is thrust into a great destiny beyond his understanding. Mm -hmm. Skywalker -esque, Ooh, isn't it? Mm, you can see yeah. where, where Star Wars got it from. Yeah. Right, okay, so Ooh, what do you think the first sentence is going to be? One. Sentence. Yeah. yeah, if you feel, yeah, I don't see why not. If it works with the. Who's reading? I'm reading it out, so. You got it. Thank you. Thank you. That, was, that one was hard. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. writing. Sienna, okay. I think I made it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay, let's try and mix these up a bit. Is that everyone, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, right, here we go. I had a pocket full of spice. I was rich. I could tell no one. Mm. In the week before their departure to Arrakis, when all the final scurrying about had reached a nearly unbearable frenzy, an old crone came to visit the mother of the boy, Paul. Ooh. Ooh. Where was it? Where was it? This stupid dust is nowhere. <laughs> I cannot fail this. Whoever controls the spice controls the universe. It's the most important thing now more than ever. Mm. Mm. Time it goes too fast. Many people are dying. The cure is found nowhere. The cure is found nowhere to live. Mm -hmm. 
Heat poured down on me as I crossed from the flyer. The planet's merciless surface fulfilled every rumour. Long ago, when all the rules were laid down, dot, dot, dot. that lonely barren world, so barren not even hope can grow, and it's about to get worse. He hadn't believed them when they said there'd be nothing. Oh. Right. Very intriguing. Mm. So, yeah, exactly. It's all very enigmatic. Yeah, it yeah, up, isn't it, it? Is. Which is a perfect first sentence. <laughs> all right, here we go then. So, who votes for? I had a pocket full of spice. I was rich. I could tell no one. I quite like that. Uneasy. Uneasy. Uh, mm. so, suddenly, four people are <laughs> voting for it. Four people, yeah. In a week before their depo- departure to Arrakis, when all the final scurrying about had reached a nearly unbearable frenzy, an old crone came to visit the mother of the boy, Paul. Actually, no, I think... Okay. I'm changing, I'm changing your, mind. your mind. Okay. Where was it? Where was it? This stupid dust is nowhere. Mm-hmm. I cannot fail this. Whoever controls the spice controls the universe. It's the most mm-hmm. important thing, now more than ever. Mm-hmm. I like that one. Yeah, it's yeah, good repetition. I already voted now. Time, it goes too fast. Many people are dying. The cure is found nowhere to live. Ooh, very timely. Heat poured down on me as I crossed from the flyer. The planet's merciless surface fulfilled every rumour. That one is good too. <laughs> Long ago, when all the rules were laid down, mm. that lonely barren world, so barren not even hope can grow, and it's about to get worse. Mm. So chill down your spine, that one. <laughs> He hadn't believed them when they said there'd be nothing. Ooh. So it seems like most people thought it was like one of the first two, I would say. Either yeah. pocket full of spice mm-hmm. or in the week before their departure. So I can reveal. In the week before their departure to Arrakis, when all the fans were scurrying about <laughs> the Indian barrel fancy, an old crone came to visit the mother of the boy Paul. <laughs> so well done. Well done, half of you. <laughs> Good job. Good it's job, everyone. said the boy's name. Which I'd forgotten from the blurb, uh, so yes, I knew or, that. <laughs> they also read the blurb twice. Mm. Yeah, I knew that that was specific. <laughs> mm-hmm. So there you go. Oh, like, soon to be a major motion picture. There you yep. go. Now is a major motion now picture. Is. So there you go. Well done, everyone. Yeah, well, yeah. Awesome. Oh, really great. Show again, again. Yeah, yeah. I know. They're fantastic. It's good. Mm. Gets you think on your feet. Yes, <laughs> yes. indeed. Lovely hooks. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm. Well done. Thank you, everybody, and uh, well done. And we look forward to. Um, See you again next week. Yes, until then. Until then. Until then. Happy reading. Bye. 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 Bye.